right then welcome to my video so now on this video we're gonna do questions that involves continuity so now say for instance you are given this question and then they say to you is this graph or this function of g of x continuous at x is equals to two now basically what is happening here you are provided with three functions of g or basically you can simply say you are provided with piecewise functions of graph g under certain restrictions now they want to know is this function continuous at x is equals to two now in order for us to answer this question there must be three conditions that needs to be true or that needs to be maintained now, what are those conditions? Before we answer this question, let us talk about the conditions that I am referring to. So now this is the first condition that needs to be satisfied. So because we are talking about graph of g of x, that means graph of g of x or whereby uh, our x is equals to 2, supposed to be equals to a certain numerical number over here. Now, if we substitute whereby uh, x is equal to 2, if we substitute uh, 2 on this graph of g and then we get our numerical value, therefore this is defined, okay? So there is nothing major about this. And therefore, the second condition that needs to be satisfied is that the limit of g of x, sorry about that, uh, the limit of let me write just write x here. The limit of g of x as x tends to approach positive 2 from the left hand side is equal to the limit of g of x as x tends to approach positive 2 from the right hand side. Now, if this is true, the limit of g of x from the left hand side is equals to the limit of g of x from the right hand side. Therefore, this simply means that the general limit, which is limit of g of x as x tends to approach two does exist. Exists, okay, it does exist. So that means if this is true, therefore this exists. And then the third condition that needs to be satisfied is that if this, defi uh, this defined function whereby g at 2 is equal to the limit of g of x as x tends to approach 2, therefore g at x at x is equal to 2, it is continuous. But if one of these three conditions, one of these three conditions fails, therefore, if this fails, for example, if this fails, therefore, we are no longer talking about continuity, but we are talking about discontinuity. So now let us try to answer this question based on these uh, three conditions, okay? So now let me just come over here. Let's utilize this space, okay? Say we want to determine uh, g at x, whereby x is equal to 2 in this case. So this is the first question. Uh, this is us answering the question. So we want to determine g at 2. So now remember here, when x is equal to 2, that means g at x will be equal to 5. Okay, okay, voila, this is defined. Number two, now this is what we are going to do. We are going to determine the limit of g of x okay we are going to determine the limit of g of x as x tends to approach two or positive two from the left hand side so that means we want to determine the limit of g of x in this case now we go back to our piecewise functions okay now we want to determine x as, uh, as x tends to approach positive 2 from the left hand side and therefore these restrictions they are going to assist us amongst these two functions which function are we going to consider when we approach positive 2 from the left hand side now between these two functions now here they say x it's less than 2 but here 
x is greater than 2. So when x it is less than 2, that's an indication that shows that here we are approaching x from the left hand side. But when x is greater than 2, this is an indication that shows that here we are approaching x from the right hand side. So for a fact here it is less, that means it's from the, we are approaching from the left. For a fact that here it is greater, that means we are approaching from the right hand side. Now that means if we want to approach from the left hand side, we're gonna use this function, which is given to be x to the power of two plus four s x tends to approach two from the left hand side. Now we're going to do our substitutions. So that means here we're going to substitute positive 2. So that means you're going to have 2 to the power of 2 plus 4. And therefore, our final answer here, 2 to the power of 2 is 4. And then 4 plus 4 is going to be 8. Now we're going to determine the limit of g of x as x tends to approach positive two from the right hand side. So that means we're gonna say limit of, so remember when we approach two from the right hand side, which function are we considering? Remember where X is greater than two from the right. So that means we're gonna consider this function. So we want to determine the limit of X, uh, the limit of X to the power of three as X tends to approach two from the positive right hand. And then uh, from uh, uh, from the right, right hand side. And therefore, we're going to substitute 2 over there. And then we're going to have 2 to the power of 3, which is most definitely going to be 8. Now, from this only, we can tell that we can tell that the limit of g of x as x tends to approach 2 from the left hand side is equal to the limit of g of x as x tends to approach uh, two from the uh, left hand uh, from the right hand side is equals to eight. We can see that this is true. Therefore, we can simply say limit the general limit of g of x as x tends to approach positive two does exist, which is equals to Eight. Now let's move to condition number three. So remember condition number three, g at two is equals to five. So we wanna check if g at two uh, is equals to limit as g at uh, limit of g, uh, g, uh, g at x as x tends to approach two. Now the thing is when g is uh, when x is equals to two, that means at g at two, we get positive five. But the limit of g uh, as x tends to approach two, we get positive eight. So that means these sides are not going to be equal. That means this condition fails. That means this, it is not satisfied. Therefore, we can simply say that g at x does not uh, does not continue at x is equals to two due to the failure of condition number three okay All right then so now let us try to solve this one using the very same uh, conditions so we are also given another function of f, whereby it is given in the form of piecewise, and then they are asking us, is this function of f continuous at x is equals to three? So remember, first thing first, we're gonna determine f at three, okay? So number one, we're gonna determine f at three, which is definable. So f at three is gonna be equals to how much? So here, x is less than or equals to three. So that means for a fact that we have equal sign, x is equals to three. Therefore, we're gonna consider this function. So to consider this function, we just do direct substitution. So that means here, we're gonna have three to the power of three, subtract six. We're gonna have uh, six 
uh, multiply by 3 minus 3. And therefore, when we punch this on our calculator, it's going to be 27. Let me see. Uh, it's going to be 27 subtract uh, 6 multiplied by 3 minus 3. It's going to be positive 6. And then we get our number to be a positive 6 at F is equals to 3. And therefore, number 2, what are we going to do? We are going to determine the limit. So that means we're going to determine the limit of f at x as x tends to approach positive 3 from the left-hand side. So that means which function are we going to consider? Remember I said when uh, we approach uh, x from the left-hand side, we take uh, inequality that says less than, okay? So that means here we have less than 3. So that means for a fact that we have less than 3 over here, we are approaching from the left-hand side. Therefore, we're going to consider this function. So that means we want to find the limit of f of x. Remember, in this case, we substitute our function, which is uh, x to the power of 3 subtract 6 minus 3, close my bracket, as x tends to approach positive 3 from the left-hand side. And therefore, what am I going to do? I'm going to substitute. I'm going to substitute what? 3. So that means here I have a 3 to the power of 3, subtract 6, 3, and then there I have negative 3. We saw this is equals to 6. Now I am going to determine the limit of f of x as x tends to approach positive 3 from the right hand side. So that means I want to determine the limit of, remember, when we approach 3 from the right hand side, we take whereby x is greater than 3. So that means we're going to take this function. So this function, it is provided to be x to the power of 2 subtract 9 divided by x subtract 3 as x tends to approach positive 3 from the right hand side. And therefore, when you do your direct substitution, you're going to get math error, which is undefined. So that means we're going to have to perform a factorization on this bracket above before we can even do substitution. So that means we have limit. And then when we open up two brackets to factorize this difference of two squares, factor of x squared, it's x and x of 9, it's 3 and 3, other bracket is positive, other bracket it is most definitely negative. And therefore here we have x minus 3 as x tends to approach 3 from the right hand side. And therefore this and this will fall off. Therefore we have limit uh, of x plus 3 as x tends to approach positive 3 from the right hand side. Therefore, now we can do our direct substitution. So here we're going to have 3 plus 3, which is most definitely equals to 6. Now, what we can see is that limit of f of x as x approaches 3 from the left hand side is going to be equals to the limit of f of x as x approaches positive 3 from the right hand side. Both of them is equals to 6. Therefore, we can simply say limit of f of x as x tends to approach 3 generally is also equals to 6 since well, this is true. Now, the last condition that we are going to treat is f at 3 equals to limit of f of x as x tends to approach 3. Yes, it is true. Both of them, they're equals to 6, 6. Therefore, we can simply say f at x is continuous, okay? Is continuous at x is equals to 3. Mm-hmm.